Welcome everyone, welcome Super Souls to the Moon Magic Tarot Channel and thank you so so much for joining me for today's readings. These are spontaneous readings, they're timeless readings and in this reading we are asking a very specific question. How can we manifest, how can you manifest your soulmate into reality? We're asking for guidance and for assistance from spirit. How can you manifest your soulmate into reality. We're going to draw three cards um, from, this is the uh, Shamanic Medicine Oracle card pack, and we're going to draw three cards with a rune and a charm for each one to guide you in. We'll do that together now. Okay, water expression. This is your first, this is going to be reading number one. Okay, let's say the first card. Reading number one, water expression. Reading number two, we have rattle, disperse. Okay. And reading number three, four legged endurance. Okay, so those are the three cards that we've drawn for reading one. Do you know I'm actually hearing four? And this is the card that's speaking to me. We're going to do four readings for this, okay? Trickster challenge. <laughs> That's reading number four. Okay, well, we must listen to this. So we have four readings <laughs> for today. I thought it was going to be three, but we're going to go with four. That's what's feeling right. So how can I manifest my soulmate into reality? We are asking for guidance from spirit. I'm going to draw a rune and a charm as well but you know take a good look at these cards feel yourself into the energy of them trickster challenge for reading four four-legged endurance reading three rattle disperse reading two and water expression reading one okay so the runes reading one has the rune of journey mm. okay Reading two has the rune of wholeness. What's that going to be? Yeah, I'm just going to put it there. Reading two has the rune of wholeness. Reading three has Bacana, the rune of growth. And reading four has the rune of the self. Now we'll draw a charm for each of the readings too. I am super excited. I love it when that happens and you just know, no, there's another one coming. There's another one there. <laughs> okay, reading one, we have, we have this, uh, I think it's a treble clef. Is that right? Or notes anyway, musical notes. There's something about vib vibration coming in here for reading number one. Oh, wow. I'm getting some big messages coming through, but I will deal with them when we get to the readings, but it's connected to water and the resonance of water, the resonance, the, the R for the journey rune. Yeah, the resonance of water, something very important coming through in reading one. Um, reading two, rattle. Yeah, I'm actually gonna put the rune up there. That feels right. Now, this is really interesting. Rattle, disperse, and we have the charm of love. Reading number three, four-legged endurance. We have Burkana, the rune of growth, and we have a little flamingo coming here. Okay. And reading four, mm, here we are. Reading four, trickster, the rune of the self, and we have a beautiful little cross. Okay. Okay, so Super Souls, sit with the cards, the runes, the charms. You may already know which of these readings is speaking to you. There may be more than one. You know, even in these sort of readings where we're asking quite clearly how to manifest a soulmate into reality, there may be more than one message that spirit wishes to bring through to you, that your, your, your guides, your spirit team want you to know about in order to assist you in this process of manifestation. So there may be more than one. If you need to 
take a little bit longer, just press the pause button on the video. The timestamps are in the information box below. And Super Souls, I will see you in the readings. Reading number one, welcome to your reading. Now you have chosen the Rune of Journey, the, the, the notes here, the musical notes and the card of water expression. Now this is just so interesting because there was a message coming through straight away with reading number one, which was to do with the resonance of water. And I actually um, have literally just gone and got out another pack of cards, especially for this reading number one. So we are asking our spirit team, your spirit guides, um, how can you manifest you know, can they give us information, help us to see how you can manifest and what you need to do, even what steps you need to take to manifest the soulmate of your dreams, to bring your soulmate into reality. Okay, and these are the, the cards. Um, for some of you who aren't, if anyone is not familiar with this work, these are cards um, by Azuro Emoto, who was a Japanese scientist, and he discovered that when you expose water to certain things like words or music and emotions and thoughts, that when you freeze the water, the crystals that form are, are they form differently depending on the, the words and the resonance of the language, the intent within the language that the water is exposed to. So water is highly, highly, highly attuned and adjusts its frequency, as do we, of course, because we are 75% water. Water expression here, the rune of journey. And I went and got these cards because I felt it was really important to draw at least one of these for this reading almost feels like a symbol and a beacon. This is the one, in fact, that one too. Okay, so these are the, the, the water crystal cards. Now you have um, Healing Hado Release, okay? And then you have the card of happiness. Now I think this is really, really interesting to, to see. Oh my gosh, that's just so beautiful, these crystals. I just glanced up to see if the camera is in focus and I'm just looking at the way these cards are just leaping out. Here we have the card of water. So what I'm hearing reading number one, okay, is you need to release something, okay? Release, release, resonance. You need to release something. Energetically, something is still within your system something from the past, some past hurt maybe, the card of water expression. It invites you to express and let go and release something in order to now then resonate in a space of happiness because this is going to manifest, this is going to bring in your soulmate. It's as if something has to shift internally or be let go of from within you, okay, in order to um, in order to literally attract, draw into you, your soulmate. Now we're gonna ask for a lot more guidance here and we're gonna ask for information and also guidance as to what steps you need to take. The Rune of Journey, again, this R for resonance, R for release. The Rune of Journey also says exactly that. You see, sometimes uh, the Rune of Journey indicates we're going to travel. I knew that may show up in the reading. It may indicate that actually part of your you know, the searching, the seeking, the steps to take for you may even be that you need to, to travel. But generally speaking, the rune of journey is a rune that invites us to journey within and to remove any inner obstacles that are standing in our way and release them. And it's literally like energetically clearing the way. And it's like um, a series of gates that you open one gate, you open another gate. And once that channel is clear, it's like whoosh, everything just comes into being. So we're gonna ask, ask your spirit guides, can we have information please? Can we know a little bit more about what needs to be released actually here? We have the three of wands. Hmm. Okay. I feel no 
thought all of these cards are coming through for us and that one is we may want more i feel that we are going to want more but let's look at these first these that have come through okay so you have the three of wands you have the card of strength you have the knight of swords you have the card of the lovers and the king of swords look at the lovers sitting between the king and the knight this is choice this is some choices here okay okay princess of cups ten of cups under strength king of wands i'm going to draw a couple more Okay, reading number one, gratitude. <laughs> Ooh, wow, we. This is just. This is just so kind of massive, actually. Reading number one. So, how do you manifest your soulmate into reality? So, first of all, what I see is there's a need to release. You do have to release something. What we're being shown here. I feel like. You've had an idea, like a picture of what you thought that soulmate would look like. You know, what they would be, who they would be. And I feel like you need to let go of something of that. I, I'm feeling like this reading is saying to us, look, look, actually, the soulmate of your dreams, I don't think the soulmate of your dreams is going to look exactly, is going to look like the picture that you thought you had of them. There's something about your choice being challenged here. Your perspective on what they would look like, what they would be, what they would bring. Something is going to be actually quite different. And it's, I feel like in a way, it's almost as if, you know, if you have a really clear idea, let, let's say, let's say you're, you're, going to, um, I don't know, you're going from A to B, you have a journey to make and you, you, you know the route, you, you know where you're going, you've decided you're going to go to that particular restaurant, let's say, you're driving to that restaurant, you know the route you're going on, you know what you get, you may even have decided in advance the, th the very thing you want to order on the menu, you've already decided it and actually the universe actually has a better plan for you and because you, and suddenly there's a diversion, then you get to the restaurant late, you find it's closed anyway early, you know, maybe there was an outbreak of COVID or something, I don't know, but you know what I mean. It's like plans don't run astray, they don't go to plan, they go astray. And then you, you're kind of disappointed because it isn't working out in the way that you thought it was going to work out. And actually, there's another restaurant just around the corner or, or there was another restaurant on the route. And if you just gone with the diversion, you would have seen another restaurant and thought, you know what, the traffic's so bad, we'll just stop here, we'll phone and cancel. You know, and then you'd have phoned and realized that it was closed anyway, or, or whatever. It, it's like there's another plan for you here. What you thought you were going to get is not what you're going to get. There's something bigger and better, something more more appropriate, more right for you, more creative, more empowered. Okay, so what you thought you were going to get. I also think maybe for some of you, you've been, you've been working with intentions and the power of the mind to, yes, that's what the message is coming through here so clearly with the resonance. Oh, reading number one, this is really such a clear message for you. So you've been working with the power of the mind, you know, having a very focused thought. And there's a lot of stuff about manifestation out there and the law of attraction. And it all talks about the power of the mind. Truly, honestly, I can tell you that the power of the mind has nothing if it is not backed up with the power of the heart. You know, we need the intelligence of the heart as well as the intelligence of the mind. 
you know, your heart will, will speak more loudly. You know, logically, you might say, you know, you might see somebody's criteria. Let's say you're on a dating site and you see a criteria and you've set your criteria and somebody doesn't match that. And that's looking at it in a really logical way. But we can meet people who tick every box on paper. It doesn't mean that the chemistry will be there, that, that you will feel fired up and passionate about this person. Okay, so I feel you're needing to shift. It's like hold tight to the qualities and the things that you really want. And in terms of manifesting, um, it's really, really okay to have that vision. But at the same time, there needs to be a greater flexibility in, it, it's almost like in how you get there, allowing the, allowing the universe to cooperate and work with you. And what I also hear as well, so emotional happiness, you see, if we think about our energetic resonance, this is where the water is coming in and the remo removing obstacles. If, 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 our, if our words are lacking in feeling, if they're lacking in emotion, if they're lacking in desire, passion, you know, it, it, it's never going to have the energy and the power to be able to move something forwards, to bring it in. So there's various things that are needing to be shifted here. So one is to be operating from your heart and not being, it's, it's kind of like holding your vision, but holding it in a feeling way. It's like really knowing this is what I desire rather than a tick box list that says, you know, must have X amount of salary or X, you know, I'm not saying that that would definitely be for you, but there's something about having such a clear tick box system that it could wipe out the very person who's going to walk into into the room and you'll just your eyes will meet and you'll just know you'll just know i'm also saying with release here that for some of you as well there have been choices in the past that left you feeling hurt and wounded and it's almost as if you've lost trust in your ability to make a decision and a choice as well I think there's slightly less of that, but some emotional residue for some of you to be released. It's like, and this is where the gratitude comes in, because if we can be grateful for our choices, and again, this is about getting clear and yet also being open and flexible. I know that's like a paradox, okay, and I get that, but I, I think it's really an important paradox because that's kind of what manifestation is like. If you believe that you're all powerful and if you think it, you know, we know that what we think creates, the thoughts create things, okay? But we have to, to in a way, I, I believe, also be an active participant to collaborate with the universe. If we're so fixed and so in control, then we could walk right past the very doorway that the universe is opening for us. It's that diversion in the road and the other restaurant that was just perfect for you, that you were about to discover and be shown. Just, you know, we've missed it because we're so fixed on going to where we thought we were going. So there's something about holding your desires in a place in your heart, but also being completely open to receiving experiences that the universe gives you. And if there are historical relationships that didn't work out, use them not as a source of disappointment, but as a source of guidance. So if somebody came along, um, and again, we don't stop when we, when we have an experience that didn't work, use that as an opportunity. So if you found that somebody was not very emotionally available, we don't sort of stop and just think in our head, I don't want someone who's unavailable emotionally because you're sort of like the universe, I don't think defines the not bit. It's just hearing emotionally unavailable. Actually, we shift that perspective and we think actually emotionally available, that's what I want. So you're using your experience as a contrast and you're grateful. It's like, thank you for giving me that experience. It has made me clearer about the qualities that are important to me. So this is emphasizing the qualities 
that really matter to you rather than the specific kind of the look, the car, the house, the, the criteria. It's like it's asking you to reach into your heart and soul and focus on what feels right. It's like, you know, and then the world will be, be offered to you. It's like it's changing that focus of direction. This is coming to you. Okay, this is coming to you. You're asked as well to persevere. Again, I think for some of you, dis disappointment has caused you to feel, you, you know, that sort of despondency, it'll never happen for me, all, all the good ones are taken, that kind of stuff. So this reading, reading number one, is all about cleansing from the inside out, shifting things within. I am seeing, this is coming, Ten of Cups, this is it, isn't it? This is the card of the ultimate happiness in love, contentment, and this is... King of Wands, this is the ultimate energy of passion, of desire, that heartfelt desire. Gratitude, you know, the life changing, the relationship that is life changing for you. So we're going to draw more cards, beautiful souls. We are going to draw more cards, reading number one, and we're going to ask for further guidance as to, we can see what you're kind of needing to do now but we're going to ask for additional guidance in how to manifest your soulmate into reality perhaps further information for you i'm actually going to draw an archetype card i think just see what energy is around you the eternal child <laughs> oh i'm loving this this totally reminds me a long, long time ago in my um, in my own in my delinquent youth. <laughs> I remember going to um, Stonehenge Free Festival in the days when there was such a thing, and right across the main gates there was a massive signpost, and it said, "It's never too late to have a happy childhood." Uh, and I have never forgotten that. Oh, super souls! I have to share with you the most beautiful pair of collar doves. The most exquisite, beautiful pair of collar doves have just landed on the bird table right outside my window. I mean, this is a symbol of union. This is a symbol of love coming together. Yes, heartfelt love. For some of you in your childhood, um, you didn't feel loved or deserved. You know, and I'm so sad. I, I really feel that depth there. It's, it's as if, I feel like you felt you had to be in service to others and you weren't allowed to take an ownership of your own needs or you learned as well. It's like you had to try so hard all the time and it actually you need to stop trying so hard because sometimes when we're trying so hard, we're so fixed on that route that we are not open to allow the universe to give to us, to show us a doorway and invite us to walk through and, and there is, you know, the man, woman, person of your dreams on the other side of that doorway. Yes, so be playful, learn to sing, learn to dance. Oh, and for some of you that could be actually a, a space where you actually do meet somebody. Learn to sing, learn to dance. If there's something that really, if that fires you up, again, something that makes your heart sing. Find something that makes your heart sing. Find something that makes you laugh and belly laugh like a child. There is more guidance coming through here already, reading number one. Find something that makes you feel alive, makes your heart sing, makes you feel like you want to get up. You can't wait until that day, that morning, that evening to go and do this thing. This, I think, may be one of the doorways that opens in real terms for you to actually meet that person. <laughs> coming to life <laughs> this is beautiful <laughs> absolutely beautiful reading number one <laughs> yes find something that brings you to life whatever that is for you this is a generic reading so it's going to be different for you each but the message actually is very clear it's like getting your resonance right within you your own vibration not trying 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 but allowing the universe to support you and help you the universe wants this transformation for you. The universe wants you to be happy. The universe wants you to find happiness. 
Find whatever it is that makes your heart sing, makes your soul come alive, whether it's joining a walking group, whether it's going to see films in a cinema, you know, learning to sing, literally learning to dance, learning to play an instrument, learning to do magic, learning to do whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. Go and do an IT course. Whatever fires you up, floats your boat. Whatever brings you to life is where I think you're going to um, meet this person. Actually, wherever you go, that just makes you feel. Okay, so we are going to draw. I think we're going to draw another card from this pack. Ooh. Okay. I. This is really interesting. I've picked up this pack, but I feel actually I want to, to draw from the um, relationship cards, the angel cards. This is what I want to see here. Ah, oh, yes, that feels right. Okay, healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents, the eternal child. You know, I think some of you literally were, I think there's something that some of you, this, this message will be for some and not all. It's a generic reading. There was something that you always wanted to do, whether it was to paint or whether it was to, you know, to dance, to sing, to play an instrument, to write poetry, to be a gardener to do whatever it is whatever you fancied doing something that you always wanted to do that got really squashed when you were little and it's like it was the thing you know or maybe you came to choices when you came to choices career choices or college choices or university choices and you were steered into something that was believed to be something that would provide you with a good pathway or something along those lines and but it wasn't what you wanted to do. It's like the head took over the heart. And I don't know that it was your head. <laughs> I think it was your parents' heads. You know, deciding this is the right career pathway for you. You should go and work in a bank or you should go and do this. Actually, if you were steered into one direction and you wanted to go and work in a bank, then go off and train as a bank clerk now. You know, if numbers are really fire you up, go be an accountant, go back to college. Do it's whatever it is, whatever it was that really fired you up, that you wanted to do, that kind of got denied to you. Okay, it's time to find something of the essence of that. Come alive again and your world is literally going to burst forth here. We're going to draw some more tarot cards because I'd like to kind of see how this unfolds. We are already being given some really big clues here. It will be unique to you, but whatever was denied you, whatever you... Yeah, whatever would have made, whatever will make your heart and soul sing. If there's something you've never done that you really always wanted to do, I think that is really, you know, again, if you love reading, but you don't have enough time for that, join a reading group. Anything that just is, gives you that zing, that spark. And yeah, put this down and let it go. Because, you know, people want, people as a general rule, I know there are some, you know, significantly abusive situations in the world and we would be very wrong to deny that those don't exist. But the reality is most parents often do the wrong things for the right reasons. They want, if they didn't have a stable financial, for example, this is just an example, but if they didn't have a stable financial secure upbringing, they will be so anxious that they want you to take a career pathway that will bring you that stability. But of course the reality is it's like they're pushing you to live through their issues and their needs and their desires and their, their, their own dreams. This is time for you to find your own dream. It's living through something else and being too fixed that has been blocking you, I think, in some way, shape or form. So we are asking now, asking your spirit guides. Um, oh, excuse me. My apologies for that little interruption, Super Souls. So we are asking um, for more information and more guidance. I mean, we've got some clarity here already, but let's see what else can reading number one know about the finding of their soulmate or reassurance regarding the outcome. Let's just see what we are shown here. Okay, that is definitely wanting to come out and so is that one and I think that one too. 
Wow. Okay. So we have the judgment card. Okay. This is really interesting. We have the King of Cups. Ah, oh, lovely. Super good. Strength again. Oh, wow. King of Swords. Look at all these kings coming and the ace. Now, where are we here? These are really interesting cards here. We have four of swords. I need to make some space here. So I'm going to shunt these up a little bit. Move this up. Okay. There we go. Okay. What we have, this is really interesting. So we have four of swords, five of wands, seven of swords. This is really interesting, you know, super souls, because this for me is showing me kind of what, what inhibited you. Okay. It's really interesting because I actually think, you know, for some of you, what got in the way of you, actually, your, your kind of belief system in yourself. Um, it's like, it's almost like, I feel like in the, your primary family, uh, it's almost as if someone in your family didn't actually really want you to succeed, which feels really sad. You know, they just, it's like, I don't know whether they hadn't succeeded themselves. You know, it's like the very best teachers are people who absolutely celebrate when their teachers, when one of their students becomes ultra, ultra successful. It's like if a student exceeds the teacher, then the t a really good teacher will love it. They will feel like they've done the best job ever. A, a not such good teacher will not really want the student to exceed their own um, experiences, their own their own kind of successes. And I feel like you guys got sort of squashed, actually, almost. That's that's really what I feel. I, I think squashed is, is, is what's feeling right. Stifled through competitiveness. Or you may have had a sibling who was really, really competitive and was always the one who succeeded and the focus was always on the sibling. But there's been something that's left this sort of feeling of, of, of kind of, it's not going to happen for you. This competitiveness that you step down, you step away. Seven of Swords, really interesting because this is kind of a bit like for me, the card of gratitude. It's like, it's time to be shown the way. It's time to move forwards, to move beyond something. You know, the signs, the illumination is coming. You know, you can heal from this. This is the journeying within. So there is a pathway here. You can heal from within you know, you can actually literally heal from the inside out. Um, the universe is going to open doorways for you here. Signs are being shown to you. And when those signs are being shown, when they are, when a doorway opens, you're being asked to go for it, to step through. It's like really, really go for it. You know, there's, this is a, a release card, the judgment. I mean, it's like rising above something, rising above previous beliefs and expectations, believing in what you deserve, having the strength and courage of conviction. Again, courage of conviction, it comes from the heart. Courage of conviction. And no, Knight of Swords, Knight of Swords. King of Swords, King of Swords, the lovers here in the middle. Know that, King of Swords here too. Know that if you really believe, this is like you need to believe not just with your head, but with your heart. This is so powerfully being spoken here. Courage of conviction. Believe in your dreams. Believe that you deserve. Thank God the universe, thank the people, including your parents and your family for the gift of the learning they gave you because they've given you experiences that have shown you exactly what you do want because you don't want what you had. The Ace of Swords, a new beginning is coming here. 
This is like a new spark of inspiration. This is all about the balance of your heart and your head, removing obstacles, so manifesting your soulmate. The universe really wishes to show you the way. The universe is asking you to have the courage of your convictions and then to listen and uh, collaborate with the universe and you know as the universe opens a doorway to have the courage to walk through it to have that courage of belief reading number one i think i'm going to kind of wrap this up actually but it's a beautiful beautiful reading it really really is because we have you know the ten of cups the king of cups have the courage of your own convictions listen to your heart and believe in that deservedness for you. Anything issues from the past and, and it was not nice that there was a competitiveness around you either with a sibling or even like I said even your parents themselves. You know they were there was something very competitive that squashed that feel it, it kind of stopped you from being alive. It's absolutely time to put that behind you and remove those obstacles Refind the quality of your soulmate, the soulmate you wish to manifest. Have the courage of your convictions, that's doing the work from the inside. Find something that makes your heart and soul sing. The very thing that you were never allowed to do or that you didn't believe you could do, go out and do it because that is where you're going to find, I think, that connection. That's where you're going to find um, the soulmate that resonates with you. And this is the resonate, resonate, um, the R for resonate coming through so strongly. And the new beginning will then arrive and the way will become clear. Reading number one, I hope you have enjoyed this reading. I have absolutely enjoyed doing this for you. I'm going to be doing quite a few different um, spontaneous readings around soulmate issues, asking, you know, there will be another set of readings very soon about um, you know, is this my soulmate for people when, when you meet someone to get some checking out around stuff, all kinds of things. If you have any ideas very specifically about questions you want to ask in these um, timeless readings, this is a timeless reading, you know, we can check in on it at any time. Um, I'm putting these timeless readings into a timeless readings playlist and the link is in the information box below and the comments so you can find all kinds of readings that answer, you know, these kind of questions that help to give us guidance along the way. And I always post every Sunday for weekly guidance from spirit so guys you can check those out those extra readings as well do post in the comments let me know if this has resonated and let me know if you have any specific ideas that you would like me or, or questions that you would like me to do readings on I do check in on them I do write them down I have like a little list and when it feels right I draw on one of those today's readings were actually suggested by somebody through the comments um, a little while ago but I wrote it down and I've kept it so do let me know super souls uh, i look forward to seeing you for other readings if you want to get notification of anything when i upload it especially the the uh, spontaneous ones uh, i do post on sundays of course if you subscribe and press the little bell icon they should come through into your stream thank you for sharing and liking thank you for joining me um, i have a monthly prize draw as well guys i give away a pack of oracle cards and a, a free private reading too so again i announce the winners of of that prize draw every month usually in the middle of the month and I tack it onto one of the Sunday readings the weekly readings weekly readings for guidance so uh, again do check that out if you want to be in that draw it's a subscriber offer and I have a subscriber email list so you can just add yourself to that again I'll put all the links in the information box along with the timestamps and everything tons and tons of love reading number one I feel really powerfully optimistic i can see there's been a wounding but there's opportunity to heal and to shift your approach so that the universe can actively work with you the universe wishes to be transformational for you the universe wishes to bring forth exactly your desires and the universe wishes to support you in healing and finding the courage to live and laugh and love again 
you know, and to believe for some of you, even feeling like it's the first time you can fully give yourself passionately to that experience because it was stifled and squashed, that is, you know, in the past and no longer relevant to you. And there will be signs that are shown to you along the way. But yeah, go out, do what makes your heart sing, and there you will find the answers. And indeed, I think potentially that person tons and tons of love to you. Welcome reading number two. You have been drawn to the Rune of Wholeness, the card of Rattle, Disperse, and this beautiful little arrow going through the heart of love. What is interesting though, the way that the, there's a little hole in the heart, okay? That's what this looks like, a little, there's a mark on the heart here. I'm just sort of mindful of that, you know, because there's also, it's not a hole to hold a string. If this is a charm, there's already that there. So I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by that. So let's, let's draw some tarot cards straight away and see what we are shown. For reading number two, we're asking, how can reading number two manifest their soulmate into reality? What do they need to do? What do they need to know to be able to actively make this possible? Okay. Okay, so first of all, you have the card, the death card. This did come up in reading one, but it is interesting because it feels very, it's in a completely different place in this reading. You have the card of strength. You card that was also available in the reading number one. This is interesting. Reading number one may resonate, but we'll see. We have the judgment card. We have the five of swords, the eight of swords, the ace of swords. Ah, and then we have the king of cups. Okay, let's see if we can move these along and get everything into one row. I hope that we can do that. I think so, maybe. Um, Hmm, okay, it's just nice to feel into these cards actually. Can we see that? Yes, that's really good. Okay, so here's the end goal. <laughs> you know, this is non-gender specific, but here for me is the end goal. It's like, wow, it's the ultimate of the cups. It's, it's the biz. This is what I'm being seeing here. And, and this there's a space of a new beginning. So this is the breakthrough moment, the finding that person, the knowing. It's like the moment you, you know those soulmate connections, the moment you actually see that person, they walk in the room, your eyes meet, and you just know that that is the person for you. That is the person for you. You are smitten. It's the path you must follow with no uncertainty, no, un no doubts, no shadow of a doubt, you know. So this is here. It's like the end goal. We're being shown this and, and, and I'm liking this reading number two, but I'm very interested in what we're being shown here in the process of how do you get, how do you manifest? How does this bring forth? You have to let something go. Okay. Disperse. Yeah, something has to be let go. Something has to be transformed. You know, in this card here of the rattle, can you see we have a rattlesnake's tail? It's like, you know, a snake grows. When a snake grows, they shed their skin. Super souls, you've grown out of something. There's a situation that you're in. There's something around you that you've grown out of. And you're needing to shed that skin in order to move forwards. Now, for some reason, there's some reticence around letting go of something. That's what I'm seeing here. But there's a decision to be made. You're worrying about it. It's really interesting. There's some, some, something is, we're going to be drawing more cards here because something is, you're needing to let go of something. You've grown out of something. I think it's something that was probably appropriate for you for a certain age and stage of your development, but it's not appropriate for you anymore. So it could be a belief system. It could actually be physically an environment or a job or, a, or something, but there's something clinging around you, the energy of clinging that you are needing to let go of, to disperse. 
in order to move forwards. Don't settle for second best. Okay, this is coming through here. Don't settle for second best. Don't um, punch below your weight is the saying. I feel like you've accepted less than you were worth for some reason. You know, really interesting. Let's, um, yeah, we have this card of judgment, which I feel like it's almost like, even if, even if someone offered you something. Okay, reading number two, this is really interesting. I feel like, I feel like you've learned to be so independent. Okay, I, that's what I'm feeling like. You've learned to be so independent that it's almost like someone could come along and offer you the world and you just wouldn't accept it. You know, or someone could offer you a compliment and you'll just brush it off. You'll, or you'll, you'll oh, you know, you just dismiss it. You could achieve and be the best in the world, honestly. I feel like you could just work some miracle and someone could come along and say, oh, wow, that's so amazing. And you'll go, oh, it's nothing. <laughs> it's got that flavor about it. And it's like, you've outgrown this. You, you, I, I kind of feel like I'm wanting you to own yourself in some kind of like pride pride of appearance, pride of who you are. You know, it, it's like you've stepped, it isn't that you've stepped down. This is really interesting. I, I feel so strongly here that you have, you have, it's not that you've stepped down. Actually, I think you constantly step up. I think some of you are probably in whatever area of your, is your chosen field, whether this is working at, whatever you're doing, working at home or just helping out neighbors, whatever you do, it's like you give it your best shot. You truly do. You give it your best shot. You invest wholeheartedly. And, and, and yet somehow in the arena of a soulmate, you downsize yourself. So it's like you give of your best, you step up all of the time, but you never, ever, ever take the credit for it. You never allow yourself to, you know, receive the award kind of thing or the accolade or the, you know, this is what I'm feeling. It's like you're constantly almost, isn't that interesting? Have you just noticed this reading number two? The candle has just gone out. I'm actually going to get another candle. I'm just going to press the pause button. I'm going to get another candle and I'm going to light that for you. It's literally like this. You're constantly dampening yourself down, you know, and, and that needs to change. Okay. You need to shake off that, um, yeah, shake. <laughs> it's a rattle, isn't it? It's like shake off that persona and step into a space of your own personal celebration. This is what your spirit guides are really clearly telling you. We're going to draw more cards. I'm just going to go and get you another candle. So let me press the pause button. First of all, I will be back in a sec. Okay, reading number two, I am burning a torch for you. <laughs> I'm lighting your fire. I am burning a torch for you. I am honoring your success. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of self-criticism and self-judgment within you as well. I really see that. Your pathway to wholeness is about, you've really, it's like this is just asking you to take, a, take an ownership of yourself. Yeah, celebrate you. Okay, I'm going to draw more cards. We're going to see what comes through. We're going to ask. So this is a very clear message in terms of almost like resetting your own energy. How do you manifest your soulmate into reality? Can we have more guidance really around, um, around kind of how to approach this for you? For reading number two. Beautiful. Okay. I want to send you away to a spa. <laughs> Reading number two. <laughs> okay. Or like a retreat. 
like a spiritual retreat, but not one where you go without and there's any form of lack. It's like, yeah, like a spa, a spiritual spa treatment. That's what I feel like I want to give you because you deserve it. This is, I actually literally want to say to you, start pampering yourself, please. Reading number two, shake off that skin. I feel again, you know, this constant stepping up, you know, I feel like you'd give someone your last penny, you know, but you would, you know, somebody needed something, you would, you'd give them your best, but you wouldn't dream of actually, even if you had the money in the bank kind of thing, you wouldn't dream of treating yourself to something. That's really, uh, you're actually being asked here. Your guides are sort of saying to you, you know, can we change this and let's make it real, okay? So let's literally make this real by doing things differently. You're altering your own resonance and frequent, frequency. So uh, manifesting your soulmate. Oh, messages coming through, but we'll come to those all in good time. Manifesting your soulmate, it's like, I think it's really uncomfortable for you <laughs> to take that praise, that credit, that, that reward, okay? Uh, and you're being asked to shift your perspective and to shift your vision, okay? This is what I mean by going to a, a spiritual spa day. I, I almost want you to be able to indulge yourself and it's so alien to you, but it's keeping you in a zone of lack. Okay, and this needs to be dispersed. You know, it's like the universe wants you to transform symbiosis. The universe wants you to get into a space of evolutionary transformation. You know, to be able to, to literally do things that mirror kind of the success that you wish to bring in terms of your soulmate. Okay, we have the sun. I mean, I love that we have this, look at this. We have the moon and we have the sun sitting either side of the card of symbiosis. And then we have Pluto rebirth. So yeah, I, it, it means stepping out of your comfort zone to accept compliments, to indulge yourself, to allow yourself to have. But when you physically allow yourself to have and you indulge yourself, um, I would add some of you might actually meet somebody on a retreat, but it's not a retreat that focuses on lack. It's a retreat that focuses on abundance and on replenishment and on, yeah, like, you know, massage, spa days, this sort of stuff. And I'm not saying, you know, if, you know, we need to always be thoughtful of our own circumstances, but nevertheless, this is about you stepping out of your comfort zone and adjusting your vision to acknowledge and allow yourself to receive that accolade, that reward. Okay. Even if it feels difficult to receive a compliment, okay, practice with little steps. <laughs> like if you wouldn't normally, like you, you don't have to go to the big, <laughs> the big thing first. Practice little steps, indulge yourself in something small, you know, do something in manageable steps, but it's going to balance you. In a way, you know, I, I think there's what I would call a kind of almost like an old school attitude of spirituality okay now bear with me on this okay because i'm not suggesting that any pathway of spirituality is is negative or not right and there is some amazing and extraordinary incredibly extraordinary focused work spiritually where people are kind of living in a place we might see as materially lacking but they're so spiritually full and alive for it that it is just amazing you know, but, but it means that their, their focus and their emphasis is, is walking that particular pathway. I feel for you guys, this is about integrating. Um, it, it's sort of saying you don't have to go without to be a spiritual person. You don't have to go without to be a good person. And in fact, you guys, because you give so much, do you know that you're one of those people that the more you have, the more you'll be able to give. You're one of those people who deserves to be abundant because you're going to share that abundance. So, so it's like really allowing yourself to have something. And the moment of the point of conception for you in rebirth and bringing forth and manifesting into reality that soulmate union, it's literally to do with 
taking an ownership or it's celebrating yourself. But I can see that it would feel a little uncomfortable. So take it in small steps. So some of the guidance we're being given here is take it little by little, take it in small steps, allow yourself to receive, take a compliment. Next time, you know, be conscious about it. Next time somebody says, oh, well, that was amazing. Or someone says thank you to you. Don't brush it off. Say, actually, oh, you're really welcome and thank you. You know, find your, test the waters, discover what it likes to feel appreciated. Okay, because again, it's like, actually, if you don't allow yourself to receive the, the thanks and the gratitude for stuff that you're giving to people, you're denying them the opportunity of validating you. It's lovely to say thank you to somebody. I mean, you know, giving is a wonderful thing. You've got to be able to receive so that other people can give to you. So there's a, a need to balance this. Take it slowly, steadily. The shift here for you, pathway to wholeness, is to learn that there is no place for lack and there's no place for low self-esteem in walking that spiritual pathway. You know, selflessness actually isn't healthy. You know, we can be giving, we can be wonderfully loving, giving people and still have a strong sense of our own self. You know, so there's something here that's really important that's shifting within you, the, the, the snake skin that you're growing out of, and this is what's going to create the transformation. And it's in that space, actually, of transformation, that's when the soulmate is going to arrive, I think, in your world. Let's, let's kind of play around here and ask for a little bit more guidance, a bit more information. I'm going to draw from the Romance Angels cards here express your love go ahead and make the romantic gesture yes this is really interesting back to this feeling of it's like if you see someone you really like it's like you wouldn't dream of approaching them because again it's that sort of oh they probably won't like me that, that self-criticism kicking in express your love say it just reach out. What's the worst that can happen? You know, they'll say, oh, thank you so much. I'm such a compliment, but you know, you know, that's not there for me or whatever. But I kind of feel like there's a need here to put yourself forward. Draw various cards here. Oh, it's coming out very clearly. Angel of solitude. This is what you need to disperse. Yeah, this is what, go ahead make the romantic gesture this is this sort of again it's like spiritual solitude it's it's as if there's a a belief that somehow again from a spiritual perspective what i would call the old school spirituality where we don't do abundance actually some of the most amazing people in the world some of the most fantastic spiritual leaders actually are, are not afraid to take an ownership of, of abundance in one way shape or form and it means they can give more you know to the world okay we're going to ask for some additional guidance now what if i may draw some more angel cards i feel like for reading number two so we kind of can see what's needing to happen can we ask for information about an outcome or how this might emerge for reading number two <laughs> These cards are just flying out for you. Reading number two. Okay. Okay. This is really interesting. The Ace of Swords. Because I feel this card is really, really inviting you to almost like consciously take care of your head <laughs> okay it's like consciously create that space of new beginning it is exactly that someone offers you a compliment allow yourself to receive it consciously allow yourself to receive become a receiver for the good 
This is gorgeous, Nine of Cups. I mean, this is the card of what I would call healthy self-satisfaction. Take an ownership of everything you do. Jump for joy, appreciate yourself. It's like, wow, you know, abundance. I'm amazing and I deserve it. Knight of Wands, I'm loving, oh, look at this. Look at this, Super Souls. Oh, Nine of Cups, Ten of Cups. We have the Devil. This is really interesting. Here we go. And what do we have here? Two of Swords and the Page of Cups. Okay, we're going to move these along a little bit just so that we can see. This is showing you like a little root here. I can see exactly uh, what this is, is saying to us here. I think what you're going to find, and this is your spirit guides are being very clear about this. What is going to, what you're going to find is when you start to test the waters to express your love, and this is including your, the love of yourself. Okay. When you start to um, make those adjustments, okay, it's going to open the pathway to what you want. But there's also going to be a part of you that will almost, I think, quite easily sink back into those. It's almost quite addictive for, for you guys to be quite self-denigrating in some way, to put yourself down. So it's like finding, you know, finding love, testing the waters, and then so, sort of reverting back to that pattern. Okay. And this is because that those patterns that we have they are very very easily activated in relationships you know relationships i think press all our buttons they bring out our deepest insecurities i think that's really true for us all so it's all this is actually saying to you look you know you're gonna jump for joy celebrate yourself really consciously allow yourself to receive what is interesting is it's almost like the moment you start to get something the moment it starts to come true, the moment you step out of your comfort zone and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to do this, here it is. I think then there's this going to be this wobble. Okay. So, and I think that's a really natural process when we are stepping into the new, something starts to manifest and then we think, oh my God, it's too good to be true. How is this going to be? Is it all going to go wrong? I can't really have this. And, and, and it's like that thinking pattern is going to kick back in. It's almost like, like an addiction you know, that, that repeating pattern of self-doubt. But you are asked to recognize that this is, you know, just see it for what it is, okay? See this pattern for what it is and dare to believe. This is, you know, the pigs might fly card. I mean, look at this, nine of cups, 10 of cups, page of cups, King of Cups, your last card here next to the Ace of Swords here. Ace of Swords again, taking conscious choice, taking conscious choice of your ability to receive, to, to celebrate yourself, to believe, to receive, to outgrow that, um, shed that skin that says, I can't receive a compliment. Shed that skin that says, I have to be so independent. I do everything myself. Um, you know, somebody offers to help you. You don't say, oh, no, 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 I'm fine. You say, oh, thank you so much. And you allow yourself to receive. You know, you have a breakdown along the road and somebody pulls over and says, oh, hi, can I help? Do you need a hand? And you're like, oh, no, no, I'm fine. Actually, that could be your soulmate. They're ready, your, your knight or your knightess in shining armor waiting to jump in and help you. You know, it, it's that exactly that, a puncture on your bicycle or, you know, you trip up and someone stops and the passerby stops and says, oh, can I help? And you're like, oh, no, 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 I'm fine. That's got to change, okay? That could be the one person, they're coming forward, they've seen you. You know, they just want to jump into your world and they want to give to you. They want to share love with you. They want to shower you. And I'm seeing that coming and I'm also seeing how uncomfortable that's going to be for you to step into this different place. But this is the key to manifesting your soulmate into reality. This is the message from your spirit guides. And they are saying, look, when you start to allow yourself to receive, you will inevitably have a little bit of a wobble and a part of you will potentially revert back, you know, but you can take charge of this. Ace of Swords, Ace of Swords, you can recognize it and you are being asked to believe and to allow yourself to literally have, to have that, to have that dream and to have that reality. Reading number two. 
I am just wanting to, yeah, I'm just wanting to send you all the love in the world and honour, gosh, the pathway you've been on because you're a real giver. You guys are absolute givers, but you're not giving to yourselves and that is the key to the manifestation of your soulmate. Super, super souls. If this reading is resonating with you, um, I would um, greatly appreciate it if you can like and share. And if you'd like to get notification of any of my readings, if you subscribe and, and press a little bell icon, um, you should get them in your stream. Uh, I have a monthly prize drawer. I give away a free private reading and a pack of Oracle cards every month. If you'd like to be in that prize drawer, it's a subscriber offer. I will put... Um, I will put the link to my subscriber email list in the um, in the information and the comments for phone users as well. This is a timeless reading and I'm doing a whole series of timeless readings, those yes, no questions, the things that help us when we have a wobble, how will this emerge, is this my soulmate, all those kinds of things. Do write in the comments if you want to give me ideas or you have a suggestion that you would like me to do a reading about. Um, because this re these readings were actually suggested by somebody in the comments a little while ago, but I write them down and then when the timing just feels right, I open that book and I find the next, um, you know, the next timeless reading to do. And they are in a playlist so you can access all of them. And I always post every Sunday. I post readings for weekly guidance every single Sunday, along with um, a lunar update for the coming week. So you can really see how the lunar energy is coming in and influencing us for the coming week. So super souls, um, just, I wish you just so much love. Uh, you guys are amazing. I am holding a torch for you and I would like you to hold a torch for you and your spirit team wants to hold a torch. They are holding a torch for you and they want you to hold a torch for you because that is the pathway to follow. The pathway of wholeness where you are complete, you take an ownership and it comes to you. Yeah, and this is cool. We all wobble when we make changes. Hold that dream. Reading number two, just so much love, so, so much love to you. Welcome, reading number three. You were drawn to the four-legged card, to the flamingo. It's interesting, we do, okay, it's two legs, but we have um, yet another animal brother and sister here. The energy is of endurance and your rune is Bacana. Bacana, the rune of growth. It, it sort of heralds a new phase of life. So we're here today to ask your spirit guides, your team, how, for advice, how are you going to manifest your soulmate into reality? Can we be given guidance? Can we be shown what steps you need to take? Now we already have quite an interesting message coming through just with this card alone, because this card endurance is asking you to persevere. It's giving you, it's sort of saying, look, your spirit animal guides and your totem animals are, they are gathering around you to support you and to support you on your journey to manifest the soulmate of your dreams. They are walking with you. They are ready and available to bring you signs um, to help you to persevere, to help you to see what the next steps are. There's a very clear message. In reading number one, we had a really interesting message that came through and I went and got us a, a different pack of cards, especially to tune into the message of reading, one, in reading number one. I've done the same with reading number three because of this card. So I'm actually going to draw some additional spirit animal cards as well. So we're going to see what we're shown here before we then draw the tarot. Okay, this is lovely. Really lovely. Oh, oh fantastic. Okay. <laughs> oh, reading number three, I'm getting really excited. So we have lizard regeneration. As a survivor, you are unparalleled. No matter what happens, you can adapt, embrace your transformation, put on your new cloak. You are a master of regeneration. Black bear guardian. You are being guarded, you are being protected. The loyalty of animals is around you. So, black bear guardian. 
gentle and wise protector. Give me your confidence and power. Help me protect the ones I love. Awaken my intuition and guide me. And then we have giraffe visionary. Rise above earthly matters. Glide through life with grace. You are able to see the right path. Stand tall in your self-worth and love with a big heart. Reading number three, I feel like the universe has your back. That's what's really coming through. I'm feeling it literally in my heart. It feels like this is such a heartfelt reading. It's like, you deserve this. We want you to have this. There's a loyalty coming through here. Animal, spirit animal, guides and totems walking alongside you, paving the way. Now pay particular attention to animals that show up in your life. If um, an animal crosses your path, if it pauses, you know, sometimes those of you who follow my readings on a regular basis, you'll know I'll stop dead in the middle of a reading because, you know, either an animal or a bird will just show up right in front of my window here where I am, you know, doing the reading and I'll often describe what's happening because they're signs that are being brought to us. So really interesting, you're regenerating. Some of you may already have had relationships um, and you are, you are now looking, you're looking for a real true soulmate. Some of you have had relationships which haven't worked out, but you kind of know what you're looking for. Some of you, I, I'm going to say some of you, I think are older souls very strong message coming through. I know it's a general reading, so the messages that come through are going to apply to some of you and not all of you. But I think actually quite a lot of people drawn to this reading number three, your old souls. You came here to do some really important work that is contributing not only to your development, but the overall kind of consciousness of humanity. But when you are an older soul, Sometimes it takes a while to find that soul connection because kind of there's work to be done. You've probably got some quite big stuff to navigate in order to be in this zone of really, really stepping up and meeting your kind of calling at a level of soul, your evolution. And also it means that it's almost like your, your soulmate is, is really quite niche to you. It's like you've got to find yourself and really align with yourself and your soulmate has to ser you have you're searching for each other. It's probably a big part of your journey, but you're coming together. There'll be work to do. You'll have come here with purpose. Gosh, I'm really hearing to use the Akashic Tarot as well in this reading. I love doing these readings in such an organic way. Everyone is slightly different. I'm, although some of the cards I'm using are the same packs, not all of them. It's like each reading is calling in different packs of cards in different ways. I will use, for, I'm gonna draw from the Akashic Tarot straight away. That's gonna be the, the next cards that we're drawing. Pay attention though. If an insect crosses your path, pause and notice it. Notice what it's doing. If a bird shows up, um, you know, if, if an animal um, comes into your dreams, pay attention. You are being guided. You are being offered support and guidance here. Seven of Roses, the journey. Yes, you are about to embark on, I want to say, the journey of a lifetime. For some of you, there may actually be some travel involved in order to potentially meet your soulmate, to manifest your soulmate. Hmm. Okay, here we have these cards really speaking. Okay, gosh, Four of Roses, Views of the Ego. Hmm. And then the king of forces. Oh, wow. Super souls, look at this card. Look at this card. There he is with the four legged. He's, he's standing here, the king of forces in nature. There is a wolf, a rabbit. You know, I've got goosebumps, a, a beautiful deer. Deer is the energy of gentleness. The wolf totem helps you to track, to find the deer. I mean, they have incredible senses. Oh, I mean, just wow. This is like such a wow card for you guys. This is totally, totally showing you. Um, your guidance is going to come through animals um, in nature. You're going to be shown signs so that you can persevere. You will have the endurance. You will track one another. Your soulmate, I'm really hearing your soulmate is looking for you very 
very clear message. I honestly, I'm, I am having goosebumps and like shivers running through my body here. Um, you are, are really, really in the right place to move beyond ego and to um, to find that absolute soul match for yourself. Um, yeah, you you are no longer bound by things that have previously held you back. Oh, this is really very magical. I'm wondering if I, that card is going to sit there. Yes, it is. I'm going to just get that in. I might just overlap that a little bit because I really want us to be able to see this. This is just mind blowing to have this card show up. Now, this is not a gender specific card, but the kings, when they show up in a reading like this, manifesting your soulmate, it's, it's like this is someone who's at the top of their game. And I want to say you're moving into a place, um, Super Souls, reading number three, you are moving into a place where you are calling in that person. You are ready. You are absolutely ready for this and they are ready for you. This is the level of connection that is coming through to you. I feel like we're just being given an abundance of encouragement, of support. Wow just wow <laughs> the energy is just lovely reading number three I'm just totally immersed in sitting here and enjoying it oh this is a new phase of life for you let's draw more tarot and see what else we're shown we're asking for guidance for reading number three that doesn't feel right reading number three um, how can they manifest in their soulmate can we be given guidance information to help us we are already receiving information again you may find this person either works with animals or they work in nature okay leave it at that for now but we may well draw more so we are asking for guidance oh look at this look at your first card your first card is the card of the lovers reading number three i feel like this feels very imminent for you it's just like you're so ready now this is very interesting look at this card we have here the eight of swords now look at this four-legged endurance lizard transformation this is really saying um, it's really important not to worry. I feel like some of you have been fearful that this is never going to happen for you. Oh, look at this. Look at this with the deer antlers. I'm just being blown away as these cards are unfolding. You have the magician, the alchemist. This is the magic that is here to, to, support, to support you, to bring this in. Look at this king of discs. Slow and steady wins the race. You are being called to have patience, endurance. Look at those deer antlers. Gosh, the animal nation. I just feel like they're just rooting for you. Absolutely rooting for you. Um, king of swords we have here. Beautiful. Ace of wands and knight of wands super souls this person is going to come charging into your life you know you are manifesting this and, and this person is coming into your world because you are ready you've done the work you've done that you've done that work you are ready to embark on a journey I, I always think that you know whatever age and stage we're at when we're searching for a soulmate we probably always believe that we're ready I could certainly apply that to me and my life and my journey. But you know, there comes a point when you really know in your heart of hearts, you really are ready. You know you've done that level of work. You know you're no longer falling into those kind of what I would call the traps that we create for ourselves, the things that we, the repetitive patterns. Um, you just know that you're not there anymore. Let me move this up. And because we want space to draw more cards, <laughs> we, we just know that this is, you're not in that zone anymore. You're just not. Oh, I feel this is really, really quite imminently going to happen. Now, I'm curious about the King of Swords here. Very curious. I, I'm wanting to just lean into this because there's this constellation here at the top here in this in this image now i don't know what that constellation is but you know my gut feeling is it's it, it could be the constellation of the bear 
Now, I may be wrong about that. I don't know what it is, and it, it doesn't say, I don't think. I might get the book out at some point and have a look. But I feel like this is, a, I, I just feel like I'm being drawn to a constellation that represents the animal brothers and sisters. Again, this is, oh, now I'm, I'm now the message is really clear here. The, I want to just say the stars are aligning for you. I said the universe has your back. It came out so strongly. The stars are aligning for you. Literally, the planets are lining up to support you. Remember, slow and steady wins the race. You don't have to rush at this. You don't have to force anything. This is the guidance for you, reading number three, is that literally you will be shown the signs. Literally, if you're not sure of something, go out in nature, look up. Look at the cloud nation and they will form a picture or a sign for you if you're having a wobble and you're uncertain. Look up into the sky. And look at this, we have the little sign here, this card of Taurus. It's absolutely minute, but it's up there in the sky. Tiny little image of Taurus, the bull, the animal nation showing themselves for you again. Do not worry. Do not worry. Endurance. This is literally, this reading is coming with a message to lift you, to hold your self-belief. You do not have to force it. You do not have to make it happen. Literally, step by step, go out in nature. You know, you guys, sometimes for those of you that follow my, I, I post weekly readings for guidance on Sunday, every Sunday. This is one of the timeless readings that I do, which I'm putting into a timeless reading playlist as well. And the link is below. So there's always extra guidance, you know, the yes or a no. Is this a yes or a no? Which way should I turn? Um, you know, how will this pan out? Is this my soulmate? Lots of readings I'm now doing these extras. And um, if you subscribe and press the little bell icon, if you're new to my readings and my channel and um, you will get notification as soon as they come into your stream but guys you can check out that timeless playlist if you're looking I'm building on that all the time um, doing extra readings that are, are always there for guidance sometimes in my readings I draw on especially the Sunday readings I draw on nature I will walk out and the trees will I will walk out and the trees just communicate and it's really clear that the different messages that the trees bring come into the readings to help to guide us so watch out for those readings that are pulling into nature again if you check out the channel and check out just the videos you'll find some in there already but nature the natural world, the animal brothers and sisters, they are offering you guidance. The star nation, the cloud nation, just go outside the earth, literally go outside and you will be shown the next sign, the next step on your pathway. This feels like, it's like spiritual evolution rising above the ego needs where we follow the ego mind rather than actually um, truly, truly align with spirit to find that true, true soulmate. I am blown away reading number three. I am just utterly blown away that I, I, I am almost speechless, which is in my readings quite unusual for me and probably unhelpful for you guys as well. But this is coming. Ace of Wands, this is coming. He is he, I say he, it's a knight of wands, he or she, because this is a generic reading. He or she, your soulmate, spouse, partner, lifelong person is going to come charging into your world and you will be shown the signs. The big guidance is not, do not worry. Take your time. This is worth waiting for. That's what's coming through as well. This is worth waiting for. Okay, I am going to, gosh, I'm going to draw some more cards. I'm going to draw some archetypal, from the archetypal energy cards, I think. I feel like I want to draw from these. Hmm. <gasps> this is, <laughs> this came up in one of the other readings um, that I've done really recently. But, you know, in your reading, 
because this is like the world. This is like everything coming together for you. This is the communication. Anima Mundi, it is like the card of the world. This is, this literally feels like, I mean, look at this. It's like the planets aligning, everything coming together for you. This is what this card is actually saying to you. This is going to come together. I actually think reading number three, on the one hand, it's worth waiting for. Take your time. Don't try to push it. Endurance, the timing needs to be perfect for you and it will be. Take your time. But I also feel like, for some of you, I think it will happen quite quickly. I think for some of you, this, is go this person is going to come charging into your world actually quite soon. But actually what this is saying is divine timing is at work. It, it's like, it, because this is such an extraordinary bond, it's such an extraordinary connection at a level of, of, of soul union that when it comes together, it's just going to happen just like that. Like literally, almost the moment you weren't expecting it, this person is just going to come charging into your world with passion, with energy, like lighting you up. And you're going to know it. That, that's really what's being said here. Wow. Um, do you know, I, I don't even know that I need to do too much more in this reading. I, I really don't know. I'll maybe draw some runes, but I really, truly don't feel that we need to do much more. It's It feels so complete here. And um, do you know, I think that's because when this happens, it's going to be exactly that. It's going to feel complete. I was thinking we were going to draw loads more cards, but you know, I, I really don't feel we need to reading number three. Although maybe I would like to know a little bit more about this journey card. Actually, let's explore. Let's ask for a little bit more information around the journey card. I know in a way it's saying, you know, that you're about to embark on a new phase of life. But yeah, let's draw some cards around this. A little bit of clarification here and we'll draw some runes as well. So your first rune, do you know I knew we were going to get this rune? Hagalas. This is the rune of disruption, but it's like the rune of, it's like Uranus, the great awakener. And you know, I really need to say to you, this, this rune, any rune of course, like the cards, they have many meanings. This rune is really saying to you, you know, this is seriously going to, this is seriously going to rock your world. Okay, when this comes, you're going to know it. Nothing else will be good enough. <laughs> it's kind of, it's going to, it's really, it, it will seriously rock your world. And I want to say, I think it might happen. I just said it's going to happen. When it happens, it will happen quickly. For some of you, that may be quite soon. For others, there's a period of time because the stars are aligning and the, the timing must be impeccable. Uh, you must not worry. But, you know, so slow and steady wins the race. You're going to be shown exactly the signs. Pay attention to those signs. But when it happens, bang, it's going to happen really fast and really quickly. Just, it, it just is. You'll just know it. Yes, the wholeness. You know, when we meet someone and we feel whole, we feel complete. It's like, you're just going to know. It, it is, it's like a completion. It's like a, a coming together. You, you just know, you just know. Isn't it interesting, you know, both these runes, again, I don't think we need any more. Both of these runes, okay, they don't have a reverse, okay? Doesn't matter which way up we put them, they're always the right way up. Yeah, this is the thing. This is the, there's something really important about the message here. It doesn't matter which way up you put it, it's right. You know, there's no reverse. There's no shadow. I mean, I know we all have a shadow and we all process stuff within ourselves and within our relationships, but this is the rightness of this connection. This is the divine connection here. There is no reverse to either of these. There is only one way up. There's only one way to go. Oh, I'm just so excited for you. I just am. <laughs> I really, really am. Okay, I want to know a little bit more about the journey. 
and I think what I'm going to do is draw some angel answers. Okay, so my, my camera had a bit of a wobble there, but let's move in and see what we are shown around the journey. Let go. I totally get this. I totally, totally get this. Okay, so this card of let go, it's this, it, it needs to sit here on the card of worry. It's like let go of let go of the need to make this happen, let go of the need to force it, let go of any, I want to say any aspect of timing. It, it's like this is such a reassurance, this reading. It's a reassurance that you don't need to worry. For some of you, yes, it may take a little while, but it's worth the wait. When it happens, bang, it's just going to happen just like that. And for some of you, I think it may happen quite soon. For others, it may take a little longer, but let go of the fear and the worry that it isn't going to happen. Or for some of you as well, let go of the concern that maybe you're never going to find that person who's at that same kind of equal connection with you. So I sort of feel like, I kind of feel I want to do just something else, but I'm, I think I'm going to just draw the astrology dice actually a little bit here see what we are offered here okay you have mars in libra okay so libra is balance it's equality mars passion what they're kind of saying i think here your guides your spirits in terms of manifesting your soulmate now there could be a connection here timing wise they could be talking about when the sun is in libra that may be you know that may be the time of year that this is happening but i think the main message here is what's sort of being said is look this there has to be the perfect balance of passion and also equality you know there's a level of connection that makes you very very equal you know in your mind your body your spirit your soul and I think that's what we are being shown here. Reading number three. Wow. Just, you're going to be shown the way. You are going to be shown the way. I think the card of the journey, really, it's like just, you know, let go of any need to, it's really interesting. Some of the other readings have much more clear direction, but more at a level of, of what needed to be let go. And, and if you're following through and see, reading more than one reading, you may find that there's a piece of work to be done internally that then places you in exactly the position that this reading is then speaking about. You've done that bit of work. Da -da, here you are now. Okay, but reading three, I am really, really excited for you. And you will be shown the way, the cloud nation, the star nation, the earth, the animal brothers and sisters, especially are walking with you, rooting with you. Everything is aligning. At the moment when the timing is perfect, this will happen. Super souls. I've probably already said this, but if you are wanting to get um, to connect in with any of my readings as I upload them, if you want to subscribe and press the little bell icon, they should come into your stream. These are part of the timeless reading list. I actually have a monthly prize drawer. I give away a free private reading every month and a pack of Oracle cards. So if you want to be in that drawer, it's a subscriber offer. Uh, the email subscriber email list is in the information box below. And uh, the way that we do that, a colleague of mine draws a name out of that email list or two names, one for the reading and one for the cards every month. And then I announce them. I usually make the announcement after one of the um, Sunday readings that I upload for weekly spirit guidance every single Sunday. And yeah, super souls, check out the other timeless readings too. And thank you for joining me. You are absolutely awesome and amazing. Just sending you all the love in the world. Welcome. Reading number four, you have been guided in by the trickster card, the rune of the self and the little cross here. This is a card that actually says kind of like, I'm going to say step out of your comfort zone. And also very interesting. It's kind of like the trickster energy 
It's like stop procrastinating, step out of your comfort zone. And maybe that in terms of, you know, we are asking today, we're asking spirit and your, your spirit team, how are you going to manifest your soulmate into form? What guidance are you being given? I think that your soulmate may come in a shape or form that is unexpected. Okay. And also that something may happen to take you in an unexpected direction, or even there may be a challenge or, or a difficulty that ironically enough opens the very door you need to walk through in order to get to that person that you are seeking. We're going to draw from a tarot card first and also really hearing oracle cards as well. You're needing to change your perspective in some way as well. Seven of Discs. Hmm. Let's keep us at that just for a moment and see. You have the card of the lovers. Super, super souls. How exciting. <laughs> This has shown up in quite a few readings. So this is really interesting, isn't it? Given the nature of, of our questions, which is asking spirit for guidance. How can you manifest your soulmate into form? Nine of cups. Oh, oh, oh. Well, 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 reading number four. We have the lovers, queen of cups, nine of cups, queen of wands, the moon, and I'm going to move all these cards along so we can get everything in. I think that is going to be possible for us. Okay, as our first row of cards. Okay. Okay, so we have seven of discs. The lovers. Also, no, this is a six. I was about to say it's a seven, but it's not. It's a six, but you have two sixes here. We have the lovers, queen of cups, king of swords. Hmm heart and mind. Nine of cups, queen of wands, the moon. Okay. You know, this is very interesting reading number four. I was thinking of the trickster energy. I feel like, almost like the person that you are drawing in, that there's maybe two messages here, but feeling like the person you're drawing in is actually going to challenge you in some way. It's almost like there's something within you that needs that. You need an edge or a... Yeah, it's, it's almost as if it's someone who is going to be exciting, take you out of your comfort zone, meet in an unexpected way. There's, there's something different here. There's something sparkly, unexpected, but also quite, I want to say challenging because, you know, the moon is a very interesting card. It's like a, sometimes it's like a rite of passage, you know, almost like a birthing, <laughs> almost like a birth canal. But you know, there's something about rebirthing here. There's something about coming through something, emerging in some way. The moon takes us to the depths of our emotions and then we emerge into the light. There's a lot of feminine energy here, even though we have the king of swords here. There's a lot of feminine energy. There's a lot of emotional energy. I'm going to draw more cards before we... Yeah, we're just going to draw. I'm going to draw more tarot actually, and then we'll draw some oracle cards as well. Yeah, I feel like there's going to be a very specific situation around you. There's some sort of guidance here around a specific situation that is actually possibly going to end up being um, a blessing, even though it may not have felt like it in the beginning. Seven of Wands. This is a card of victory. Six of Cups sitting under the lovers. We have the Hermit. 
Ten of Wands, okay. The Chariot and the Three of Cups. Okay, this is a celebration. Can even herald an engagement. Hmm. These are the cards that are really interesting for me. Because it's almost like you're needing to... Gosh, I, I don't want to say you're being tested, but stretched in some way here. What's really coming through, you know, reading number four here is is that I think your, perspe your perspectives, your perception of something is being challenged here, okay? So your perception of something is, actually you're, you're kind of being asked to, to, yeah, challenge your perspective, challenge your perception. Something hasn't been entirely clear this is a really interesting reading, um, reading number four. Now, this rune, the rune of the self, it's the rune of joy split down the middle. So it's like two people looking at each other. There's a mirror. Okay. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So I feel like the messages are coming through really more clearly here now. I think that you have had okay some kind of a relationship i think there's like something interesting of i think there's an energy around you now actually of someone who's kind of been playing some games with you okay it may have been someone that you thought was going to be the love of your life or somebody who showed up who claimed to be something that they're not there's some element of deception, some, some aspect of deception or misrepresentation has interfered with a relationship that you wanted, okay? And you really did want this relationship. But some aspect of deception, you may, it may even be self-deception. You may actually have had some self-deception and it kind of meant that things didn't pan out the way that you wanted, okay? You kind of thought that you would, that this was gonna happen. You thought that this was gonna be the relationship for you. Now this reading is we're asking guidance on how can reading number four manifest their soulmate into reality, bring this into reality. Now there is guidance that's saying here, um, I, I think things will move forwards. We have a card of celebration here, okay? And this can be an engagement, you know, sometimes this card. But I feel like there is something that didn't work out first of all for you. And I'm really sorry that that didn't work out. But there was some element of either deception, something was mirrored to you, something was actually, there was like a life lesson to learn in this situation. And it interfered with your energy. It literally kind of interfered. It stopped you from being able to nurture and bring forth something that, a relationship you wanted. You know, for some of you, I even think that maybe there was, I'm not getting a distinct feeling of competition as such, but it was burdensome. I mean, it, you know, for some of you, even, even when you were in that relationship, it left you feeling alone because that can happen. It's like you've had a connection with someone who was, um, in something of this deception, it was, they were absent, they were emotionally absent, they were unavailable empathically, they weren't available to connect to you, you know. I think, I, I do think they liked you, but they weren't really honest with you. That was the problem here. And, and you've kind of needed to sort of say goodbye to them, really. And I, I think it's, it's left you with, with a bit of a heavy heart, if I'm honest. That, that's what I'm seeing here. But I want to say reading number four, 
<laughs> do not do not despair because reading number four this is going to change this is going to shift um, the burden of this person is going to shift it's very interesting i'm really seeing this reading almost like a division here in this middle part here where we have a shift of energy the way the cards are sitting okay so i'm going to draw some more cards and then i'm actually literally going to possibly even i haven't done this for a while i often do i used to do a lot of energy shifting within a reading and actually reading number four that's what i'm going to be doing in this reading i am going to do some energy shifting with you yeah king of cups here we go fabulous this is going to be happening yes this is going to be this is somebody who is going to invest with emotional depth okay yes absolutely it's coming the re the relationship is coming for you that's absolutely certain the soulmate will be manifested there's something you have to leave behind it's the energy of a trickster the energy of a challenge some aspect of deception whether it was self-deception or actually i think for a lot of you it was someone who was actually not particularly upfront okay and i don't think they were particularly honest they kind of played with you a little bit maybe they said something to kind of i feel like literally you were given mixed messages misinformation even i would venture to say quite direct sort of direct and yet not direct it was like someone had an agenda somebody had an agenda and they kind of played with you a little bit here i think ultimately the pathway that they're on is one of a relatively low level of consciousness i don't think that they were able to i think they're not used to doing things in an in a straightforward way it's just the way that they are and i don't think it was that they didn't want you it's just that their own needs were very very great and it meant that even though they wanted you it was like ultimately they wanted you for what you would be able to give to them and something is needing to be thrown out here there's like a rite of passage to come through here where you don't tolerate this anymore you know you're not going to do this anymore you're not going to be burdened by somebody else's needs anymore you're not going to be sitting in a relationship anymore where somebody somebody's emotional needs or wounds are are so great that you know you're just not even on their agenda this is going to change this is going to turn around okay so i'm going to move I'm going to move these cards down here okay this feels like the right kind of positioning for these here and then we're going to draw more cards on this side but this is what's needing to be turned over i think you gave this person a lot but they kind of had they wielded power over you i think but in a slightly underhanded actually not even slightly for some of you in an underhanded way so how can reading number four be helped to manifest their soulmate into reality how to bring this um into the realness of, of form to manifest their soulmate now i'm seeing success over here it's to do with shifting any kind of power balance with them it's like taking back your power okay that's what i'm feeling so i'm actually going to call in the energy of, of a particular crystal here okay i'm going to use a crystal that's called aragonite aragonite interestingly enough is the earth goddess so there's something about being very grounded place that here there's like I, I want a division here okay feels really really important and actually I'm also going to bring in a very large quartz crystal here too so I want the grounding of aragonite because I want you to maybe be anchored here so excuse me I'll hopefully not lean too far over the camera you might see a little bit of me leaning across but we have a beautiful quartz crystal here let's place that here as well it's lovely because it actually has some stone in this 
quartz, which is very similar in color, very earthy, very powerful energy coming in here. We are gonna place this bang in the middle. And what we're doing here is we are creating like an energy shift. We are dividing the past from the present and the future. This is the source of empowerment, getting grounded, getting anchored, cutting those cords, letting go of whatever this person delivered in your world, okay? Because this, if we see the trickster as like a threshold guardian on your pathway, on your journey, in your story, the threshold guardian challenges us, but it means that we grow, okay? That's kind of what happens. And when we grow, it's really interesting. I think they did have power over you in some way. They kind of lured you in a little bit here. They, they did want you, there's no question of it, they did want you, but their own agenda was way, way, way greater than ever any recognition of your own needs. So in a way you were quite isolated, even though you were with someone, and they really did burden you. And I think some of you, I mean, literally, some of you may also even have literally been ghosted by someone. You kind of gave your all. You gave your all emotionally. You tried to give them everything. And literally, they kind of just look the other way. You know, there's, and have never really given you a proper reason or justification for their behavior. They've never really acknowledged or owned it. There's something around this aspect of this reading. So, what we are going to do now is very clearly say, do you know what? This energy is now finished. The trickster energy is over. We are going to sweep this away. We're going to let go of it. We're going to move beyond this. Actually, I have two sets of Oracle cards that I wish to draw. I'm going to use these for here and I'm going to use the Art of Manifestation cards on this side too. Ah, oh, lovely. Authenticity. Hold your head up high. Walk tall and be your authentic self. They really undermine you. This card asks you to shed the masks that you believed you were required to wear. Walk to the beat of your own drum and do not be afraid to shine. In doing so, you give permission to others to do the same. Take back your power. Ooh. Mistakes. Oh, this is a good card. I really need you to be okay. Let go gracefully. <laughs> and take a leap. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. So we have this authenticity card. This is really shifting the energy here already. I can feel that the difference in bringing this in bringing these cards in. So mistakes. If you feel you made a mistake or indeed someone else has done so with impact on you, please do not feel bad about this. Treasure and value your mistakes and those of others around you. They are the cutting edge of our personal growth and evolution. Lean into the learning and celebrate your openness to grow. Let go gracefully. Something in your life is calling for you to let it go. This could be an actual situation still, but I think for a lot of you, it's also the residue of a situation that somebody left you with. Let go gracefully. Whatever has taken place in the past, it is time to move forwards and letting go will make way for the new. Whether this is a person, a situation, an outdated thought or behavior pattern, this card comes to assure you that new horizons are waiting for you. Take a leap. I said right at the beginning, don't procrastinate. Take a leap. This card is an invitation to take a leap of faith. Sometimes, even when we desperately desire change, we procrastinate and find all kinds of reasons as to why we should stay as we are. It is completely understandable to be anxious when stepping into the unknown. This card is calling you to trust and make that move. Wow, this is feeling good. Now I'm now going to draw some archetypal energy cards to have a look and see what we are shown for reading number four. I feel like the energy is shifting. It's like giving you your, your guides, your spirit guides, your team are giving you permission to let go. They are saying, take a leap. 
if you are procrastinating because of the fear that was left with you from this situation, or you are in a situation and you know it's not working for you, whatever it is, it's time to let go. Um, appreciate this for the fact that it, it gave you it gave you life learning and character building and now it is time to take a leap, let go and move forwards. Do not berate yourself for that, what, what may feel like a mistake. It, it's a learning curve, whatever we do, it's a learning curve and it's now time to take that leap into the, into the new. Let's see what archetypal energy we are shown. I'm just, I'm just gonna pause for one moment. This beautiful little cross, this is like spirit walking with you and saying, look, we know this was tough, okay? It's like, you know, but it's not your cross to bear, okay? This is not your cross to bear. It's time to let go and move beyond it. Okay, okay look at this look at this card now this is magical in its own way because in a way we have the destroyer and this is an energy with the trickster that says you know this person was pretty destructive but you know what the destroyer also does the destroyer says actually it's time to let go of something let go and move on it's time to let go of the past move beyond it look at this we have the card I, I just this is the card of the father very very interesting archetypal energy but what I really want to show you is it's like it's like there's above ground and below ground it's like that the sky energy of the um, of the tree here rising up and what we also have here it looks like a kind of a wheat field. It's the growing of something. I, I feel this card really, it's quite interesting that it's, it, there's a divide. And, you know, in the, on the one hand, I want to place it this way up so that you can see that tree moving forwards. On the other hand, I kind of, this is like sorting the wheat out from the chaff. I want to sit it this way. This is about sorting something out, taking charge of something, taking back your power. It's kind of like the emperor here, you know, it is now time to let go, to let go of the old and move beyond something absolutely, completely and utterly. Now, I feel like we can now divide here. We can place all of that here. Your spirit guides, your team are saying, you know, this is time to release anything connected to this. It is time now to move forwards. We'll draw some more oracle cards to see where you are guided and what else we are shown. This is very interesting and um, to see what we are shown, what reading pile number four, reading number four are shown for additional guidance to manifest their soulmate. What can we see? Protecting treasure. Rescue. Okay. Okay. Right. Follow the leader. This is a card that says walk your talk. It's time to be the biggest, best version of you. It's time to lead by example, which is exactly what this says here. Hold your head up high, walk tall and be your authentic self. This card asks you to shed the masks that you believed you were required to wear. Walk to the beat of your own drum and do not be afraid to shine. Okay, you were suppressed for some of you, I think. We literally, in doing so, when you step up, you give others permission to do the same. What I want to say to you, because this, it's like, mm, this is really interesting now. Now we're starting to get into, we've released the past, we've got grounded, we're anchored, we, we know there is clear messages, clear guidance, be you, be your authentic self. Don't be anyone else. This is the key to you attracting and drawing in your soulmate. It's you being your authentic self and messages coming through. I literally think that, you know, what we are being shown here, protecting treasure, rescue, I'll speak about this in a minute, but you know, be your authentic self. I feel like in a really interesting way, 
without this experience, you wouldn't have found the truth of who you are. You know, sometimes you have a bad experience and it really firms up your values. It's like if you're bullied at school, for example, indeed some of you may have actually been engaged in some way with a bully, with a manipulator, with a narcissist, but those experiences mean that your values become so true to you. If you were bullied at school or bullied in a relationship, you know that you would never you would never dream of bullying someone else. You would not tolerate that. So that becomes a strong strength and value within you. And you only have that firmly within you because of this. You fight for the underdog. I do want to say that I feel some of you may find your soulmate. It's a message coming through. It will not be for all of you. You may find your soulmate for some of you. You may actually find that person in some form of almost like spiritual or therapeutic community or environment. There's something about the therapeutic, the healing environment, the sharing of your story, the walking tall. You know, some of you may become counsellors, some of you may be counsellors. There's some kind of healing work that you can offer to others because of your experiences. And it's through that healing work that there may be an avenue that opens up where you actually then come across somebody who really resonates with you because they too have been through a challenging experience or several challenging experiences and therefore you're not resonating within the challenge you've moved beyond it but it's like you can you walk alongside each other being your authentic selves you don't have to be anyone else it's like it opens the doorway here we have the nine and the three so so the soulmate connection I, I feel is really being offered here reading number four it's very much about you being you being your authentic self, you don't need, when follow the leader is a card that really says, step up and be you, okay? Be your authentic self. This is what this card is truly, truly talking about. Protecting treasure is really interesting because this is, it's like it's the same with rescue. You know, both of these cards actually indicate that I want to say it's safe to love reading number four this was a biggie it's safe to love it's safe to risk loving you are protected your heart is your treasure when you are your authentic self the doorways will just open for you this is the message from your guides they are saying really just be your authentic self do not suppress in any way who you are in fact, use your experiences to be absolutely your authentic self. And that is like the key that opens the doorway. Nine of Cups, this is, again, there's a real uh, self-assuredness. Uh, uh, you know, it's just a, a solid sense of deservedness, self-esteem. Um, the Queen of Wands, you know, she is, I always feel, a master manifester. The Moon. It's this rite of passage, out of darkness into light. Six of Wands really, really coming out on top. Then things begin to move and we are celebrating the beginnings of a relationship. We are celebrating the initial stages. And this is somebody who has emotional depth and emotional understanding. It's really interesting when we talked about healing and therapeutic environments. Sometimes this is a card, the King of Cups is known as the card of the counsellor and the emperor coming forwards, the energy. It just feels like there's so much authenticity here, reading number four. And there's so much encouragement and support and care and, uh, and guidance to say it is safe for you to love. And this is the real key for you um, to actually being able to be in a space where the, the, the door unlocks and the pathway opens for you to meet your your true soulmate but we will draw some more cards and ask for you um reading number four we're going to ask for more guidance as to sort of how is this going to work out can we have any more information and guidance as to kind of how to proceed what kind of what can we what can we be shown this is really interesting look we have here um what did we have here you see ten of wands 
Ten of Wands. It's time to put the burden down. This is really clear. Put that burden down. Don't try to do too much. Um, actually, as well, do you know this is a really clear message? Um, delegate. You don't have to do everything on your own. Do you know, reading number four, sometimes when we have been badly treated, we learn to do everything on our own to the point where independence, we're so independent that we, we juggle everything and we do everything. This came out in one of the other readings, I'm trying to remember which one. I sort of leave a reading and move into the next in a different zone. But you know, this is literally saying, you know, it, it's time to relinquish independence to the point where you keep people at a distance and you don't let them in and you therefore never ever receive the support you need. Yes, cutting the cords, cutting the cords. <laughs> I can see where we are. Oh, this is definitely all three of these cards are coming out. And these. And that one too. This is a lot of cards coming through for you, reading number four. These I'm placing here. This is a card um, of liberation. You know, this card is for me, um, the devil. It speaks of addictions. It speaks of cords that tie us. It speaks of things that people who've treated us badly, but it is an invitation to release and let go of something, to become liberated from the chains, the cords that tie us. And actually it is literally saying, you may need to um, give up something of, you know, walk tall and be your authentic self, be your own leader. But also relinquish the need to do everything yourself, okay? Because actually um, you need to be able to receive. It's really important. Yeah, four of swords. So this is what we're going to see here. I think we're being shown a progression that there is a healing and maybe a little period of retreat before we move into this space of self-assuredness and yeah, there's, there's a healing to be done here. A, a little bit of a retreat. And this is not retreat running away. This is retreat as in recuperation. And then we move to into a space of renewal, a new dawn, death and rebirth. And you come out here dancing, singing, dancing for joy. Um, the Nine of Swords, this is what you are leaving behind. It's like letting go of the worry. I mean, look at this here, Knight of Wands. Oh, we have King of Wands, we have the Tower. Look at the Tower sitting under the Death and Rebirth card. The Three, this is the, the end of that conflict. Removing the cords that tie you. Page of Pentacles. And then we, last of all, we have the Ace of Swords. I feel like for you guys, there is a journey to go through, okay? Authenticity. What this is really saying here is, and I think this is really important. I think for some of you, there is a need to recover, okay? That's what I feel. There's gonna be a need to recover and that will create a space of rebirth I, th I think you're also, it's very interesting. I, I think when we recover and we step into a space of the new, what can kind of happen is that we, we have a little bit of toing and froing from within us, but this is gonna change. Reading number four. Now, for those of you that are new to my readings, uh, I worked as an accredited counselor for over 28 years. I now do much more eclectic work. I've always read cards, but I didn't read them in such a public way. It was just a personal thing for me. For me, I read for my family, my friends. Um, my work now is very different. It's about reaching people in a, you know, more people if I can. And, but I have online a library. It's, it's www.azemotionalhealth.com and the link is in the information box below and in the comments for phone users. This is a resource. It's, it's a resource that will, is so full of videos, of audios, of information to help you learn to navigate your emotions and use them as a source of empowerment. What I see here is there is a letting go gracefully, 
a taking a leap. What I was going to say in the library, if you check into the library, it's a completely free, it's a membership site, but membership is completely free and always will be. This is a contribution I wish to put into the world as I came out of my therapeutic work full time. And there is a psychology of emotion section in the library. And there are two audios in that section. One is called the, uh, the wobble of change. And the other is called the sadness of moving forwards. Both of those are relevant to the process of how we feel emotionally as we let go. Because what happens is that we, we retreat, we recover, we recoup, we regain our energy, we step into the new, it feels fantastic. And then we kind of have a wobble. Nine of swords. It's like, oh no, am I going to revisit? Will it all go wrong again? You know, this kind of fear and worry then we can kind of begin to that's kind of that wobble of change very important because really the nine of swords it really very often says to us you know it can be a bit of a dark night of the soul but it also says to us very often the worries that the things you are worrying about are bigger you know the worry is bigger than the reality here it, you know you are older wiser you're not going to do this again it's time not to procrastinate take that risk. Don't let the fear of the past uh, tie you. Yeah, we're letting go of the cords. This is going to open up Knight of Wands, King of Wands, possibilities. I think again, when your soulmate comes into your world, this is going to create again a wobble. You know, when we enter a relationship, I think this is really human. Every button will be pressed because if you have been badly treated, when you enter a new relationship, it presses the buttons and the insecurities come up. But this is a relationship that is going to be healing. It's actually joyous. This is someone who is going to help you to take off the blindfold, to cut those cords, to end that internal conflict that you have been left with and to know that you can be you. Yeah, you can manifest what you wish. You can be you, that you are worthy. Uh, I mean, this is someone who is holding their head up high and it's a space of new beginnings. Reading number four, Super Super Souls. I'm actually going to just draw another archetype card to wrap up this reading. I may draw from a Romance Angel card as well, but I just want to draw another archetype card. Hmm, this is very, very interesting. Yeah, we have the stone, the judge. <laughs> the starborn. <laughs> this is absolutely lovely. Reading number four, this is just such a confirmation of what is coming in this process of healing. The stone, it's like anchoring you. It's learning from history. It's, it's knowing, you know, the, if you think of a stone as a living entity that has lived for millions of years, it contains memory, it contains history. This is saying to you, you know, a, a, a relationship of longevity and of wisdom is coming to you. The judge, I think, I said you, you might meet this person in a therapeutic environment or a, the judge can indicate that we're moving through that self-criticism. But I, you see, I think this card is really speaking clearly to you. It's saying, look, you are going to attract somebody who has the same values as you. They care. I mean, if you think about what is the rule, what is the rule of a of, of a judge what is the role of a judge the judge is here to uphold justice to uphold human rights it, it's this that is the the archetypal energy of this and the starborn is the light coming back into your life the spark of life the new beginning after a rebirth this is such a confirmation reading number four that you will come through this and you will bring into your life the soulmate of your dreams. The key aspect is to be letting this go and then navigating the, the residue of this experience, because this has been really big. 
the residue of this experience when you then meet someone and navigating that so that you it becomes a healing relationship which is why i think it is someone who has your soulmate is someone who has also experienced adversity difficulty or challenge that is really really clear here just as you have and there we have of course the rune of the self i said at the very beginning this is the rune of joy split down the mirror the middle and it's the mirror two selves looking at one another, two souls who know what it means to come through something challenging. You can face each other in that space of authenticity and honesty. This is what you are attracting. And ironically enough, despite the challenges, this is actually giving you the foundation of authenticity and integrity of real values that is going to bring into you and draw to you the soulmate of your dreams. I'm actually not going to draw any more cards. Reading number four, this feels absolutely complete and perfect. This is such a confirmation and also an acknowledgement that meeting this person will, it, will in itself be a part of your healing journey. And I do think this is somebody who's in the world being authentic and actually either delivering some form of care or some form of therapy or some form of um, you know, they're rectifying injustice in the world. They are maybe a campaigner. They are standing up for what they believe. That's the kind of essence of the person that is coming into your world. And therefore, those are the kind of environments that you may well meet this person in. Reading number four, I am actually, I am in awe of your journey. And I am humbled, actually, humbled by the level of work that you have had to process to be where you are and truly, truly humbled in awe, very big respect to you all and so deserved, so deserved. The relationship itself is part of the healing for you both. Um, beautiful, beautiful, like it's a beautiful ending, beautiful, happy endings here. So super souls i am going to complete this reading wonderful friends if you wish to get notification of any of my readings whether it's like these the spontaneous timeless readings um then if you subscribe and press the little bell icon you should get them into your stream as soon as i post them i put readings up for guidance every single sunday for you know weekly spirit guidance and um, lunar updates so you get a flavor of the incoming energy of the moon which affects us very much emotionally so maybe very relevant to you guys so that i also post on sundays I have a monthly prize draw where I give away a free private reading and also a pack of these oracle cards too. If you would like to be in that prize draw, it's a subscriber offer and I have a subscriber email list and one of my colleagues actually draws names from a hat every month and I announce the winners um, after one of the Sunday readings, um, usually in the middle of the month, every month. So that's information. All of this information will be in the um, information box and comments, um, including as well a link to my free online library where you can find a ton of resources to help you navigate emotions and navigate healing and change. Reading number four, I am humbled, honoured, truly, 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 you, you have, um, yeah, respect, I will always treat people respectfully, but when people, you know how people really earn your respect sometimes, and um, reading number four, you have earned my respect. Truly, truly humbled to be reading this for you today, and um, so, so much love to you.